She was TV's youngest talk show host. I was 23 when I did the pilot. I literally would pretend to be Oprah. Oh. I, I would hold the mic and I would think, what would Oprah say? What would Oprah ask? And she did more than just captivate an audience. America trusted Ricky Lake for 11 successful years. My show had a purpose, and we did great things for teenage pregnancy and for drug addiction and a lot of things I'm very, very proud of. It became a phenomenon. That was then. This is now. The voice of a generation is back. Thank you, everybody. You make me happy to be back. When it comes to what's new and hot. Started right here. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? It's time for the final countdown. <laughs> the show starts in... you're about to meet, this precious time in their lives has been anything but joyous. I'd like you to meet 15-year-old Nicole. She says that from the moment she discovered she was pregnant a couple of months ago, she has experienced nothing but rejection from almost everyone she thought she could count on. Everyone, that is, except her mother, Sherry. But her support comes with a very specific condition, and Nicole is not happy about it. Nicole, tell us, what, what does your mom want you to do? Um, at first, my mom wanted me to put my baby up for, to have an abortion. But now she wants me to have, now that she's con... <laughs> I know, this is, this is hard to talk about. Yeah. Now she's gotten over the fact that I won't have an abortion, and she's, she wants me to put it up for adoption. Um, I don't agree with that, and I think that she needs to quit pressuring me, because the more she pressures me, the more I want to do the opposite that she's doing. So you need her to leave, her, to, to leave you alone. Now, your whole family has abandoned you. Yeah, my entire family. I mean... They, they feel like I've abandoned them, too, but what I need from them is their love and their support. And they feel that if I'm not doing what they want me to do, that they're not going to stand by and see it. And I understand that to a point, but I also need them to be there for me as my, you know, they're, they're my family, and they should be there with me through so everything. So how does that make you feel that your own family has turned against you in this great time of need? It hurts very much. It hurts a lot because, you know, I've been abandoned by my father and my grandmother, you know. And this is the time when you need the most. Yeah. So, so what have the past two months been like for you? You're constantly fighting with the one person who is supporting you, and, and yet she wants you to do something you are dead set on not doing. It's been very hard. I mean, it's been very confusing because I haven't completely made a decision on what I'm going to do yet, but I really need her to quit pressuring me along with my boyfriend. And what do you want to do? I mean, you're 15. Can, are you old enough to take care of a baby? I'm not sure yet. I am not ready to make that decision yet. I'm not ready in this enough into this pregnancy to say, yeah, I can take care of a child. I am 15, but yes, if I'm old enough to have sex, am I not old enough to, you know, keep a child? Well, I mean, you know, a lot of the young mothers we've seen on our show through the years do have the support of their mothers. Their mothers are, are, are a great part of raising their grandchildren. And in this situation, your mother just is not going to be there for you. So, so what are your options? I, I mean, I guess you're, you're beyond three months pregnant, so, so abortion is not really an option anymore, and you're, uh -huh. you're against that. What, do you, what are you leaning toward doing at this moment? Forget about your mother and what she wants. What do you think is best for your unborn baby? I'm not sure yet, but it's hard because I have my entire family saying, put this baby up for adoption, we'll be so proud of you, you know, you'll be the best person, you know, we'll think of you so highly because you made the choice not to have an abortion, but yet 
my boyfriend wants me to do that, and in my heart, to a point, I want to keep this baby because I made this baby, and I need to take responsibility for the choices that I did. But some people might suggest that you aren't. That is taking responsibility. That is doing what is best, possibly best for your child. That is true, but I, at this point in my pregnancy, I'm not ready to say what is best for my, for my child. Okay, yes, ma'am. Let me ask you a question. Are you married? Do you have a job? How are you going to support this child? I have a job. No, I'm not married. I see where do you're you coming from. Do you have your own home? How are you going to pay for all these finances? Uh, having a child? Do you, do you have a child? No, I don't have a child. I, I'm only 18 years old. How am I going to even think about having a child at this age? I mean, I'm okay, so, so let's think about it. You're three years older than she is. What would you do now? 18 years old, what would you do if you were in her predicament? Three months. Well, she can't have an, an abortion now, but I would definitely give it up for adoption. I'm not ready to have a child. What, so what would you do? What do you think you would do if you were in Nicole's shoes? Give it up for adoption. I mean, you're doing the best for the... You're making it sound like it's so easy. No, it's not easy at all. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I feel for you a lot, but... I mean, you're suffering, but you're going to put the baby suffering, too. I mean, I don't... She's not ready. I know it's... She's not ready. She's, just, she's too young. Should we hear from Mom? Yes. All right, let's hear from Sherry. Sherry, come on out. Thank you for joining us. Boy, I don't envy your situation. What's it like for you? I mean, how did you come to learn that your daughter, your 15-year-old daughter, was pregnant? Um, she had missed her menstruation, and I highly suspected that she was pregnant. So wait, she, she verbalized to you that I haven't, I haven't gotten my period? Um, yeah, for the most part. And so immediately you thought, you knew she had a boyfriend, you knew she was in a relationship, Correct. you knew she was having sex. Correct. Wow, so when you found out that it was definitive, that she was definitely pregnant, what went through your mind? Um, initially, I was, I was very angry. I was upset and obviously very concerned about what decision she was going to make. And, and were you concerned because of how the effect of her decision would have on you oh, and absolutely. your life? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, because it will change her life no matter what decision Tell her she how makes. her changes, how, how it's going to change her life. Um, Nicole, you're a very bright young lady with an incredible amount of potential and um, if you choose to have the baby and keep it your life will change forever I, I'm, um, I know this mom but if also if I give it up it's going to change my life forever too and you know this you had me and you know right, right. it's I, Nicole it's, it's a difficult decision and I know that I've been there I've been where I'm at and what do you mean you've been where, you, where she's at um, I was 19 when I had her and I went through the same difficult process she's going through. Did your through. family try to tell you to give the baby up for adoption? Oh, yeah. They did. Oh, yeah. And you made the decision that you felt was best for you. Do you regret for a moment that you didn't give her up for adoption? No. No. I was in a different situation than she's in. Um, I was 19, but I was successful at that time. I was on my own. I finished my high school education. Um, I was managing a restaurant. I was but it was still hard for you nonetheless. Sure. And it's, you want to it's keep... It's always an emotional situation, and I've been there, so I understand what kind of decision that Nicole's going through. And, and so what do you want her to do? I want her to do what's best for the baby and is best for you, and that is that you give that child to a loving couple. Who will be able to financially much. Very, very mixed reaction in the audience. You disagree, ma'am? Stand up, please. You know you gotta stand up here. I feel that you should give your daughter a chance in making her own decisions. At least she told you she's pregnant. She could have the baby in the garbage. And either way, it's gonna be... Either way, it's gonna be resentment because if she has to give her baby up for adoption, she's gonna resent you. So give her a chance to make her own decision, the right thing. Okay, but let, let, let's step in mother's shoes for a moment. Do you have any idea when she comes home from the hospital with that baby, knows nothing about raising baby, babies, I don't know what your job pays, but I would imagine it won't pay for probably a week's worth of diapers. Her mother is right. gonna be raising this baby too. Yes, but I have a lot of nieces that were teenage mothers, and you get through it. You get through it. Yes, sir. Hi, Ricky. Um, I can sympathize with the lady because um, I'm going through the same changes now with my daughter, and my daughter's 17 years old. Wait, wait your daughter's pregnant? Yes, and she's um, 17 years old, and me and her, you know, I love my daughter, and I, you know, I spoiled her, and I gave her everything. I mean, I have seven children, so I can understand, you know, how to I had my first child when I was 16, 17. You were busy. Yeah, I wasn't busy. Man. All right, so wait, are you, are you pushing your daughter to, to give the baby up for adoption? What would you like her to do? Yes, I am pushing my daughter 
to get an adoption or get an abortion. My reason for, I mean, I understand what the lady just said, but a child cannot raise a child. You know? Okay. Well, let's keep in mind that, that this child has this unborn baby growing inside of her. Does anybody realize, I mean, those of us who do have children know what it's like to get attached to this baby that is a part of you. Yes, ma'am. I would like to know if you, um, if she's still with the boyfriend and is she... Is she still with the boyfriend? Well, you know what? We have Nicole's boyfriend here and he's backstage. Should we meet him? Yeah. You know what? We're going to meet him when we come back after break. Don't go away. More to come. keep it but I mean if she doesn't want to if she does make the decision to have an adoption then I'm with her all the way I'll support her all the way and I do love you so I love her not and I care about her and I care about what's going to happen with this kid and I just think that overall we should quit pressuring her and you should quit pressuring her too I mean just let her make her own choice just leave it alone <laughs> towards keeping the baby. What are you doing to prepare for this baby? Well, right now, because I just had to move to Texas from Colorado where they're living, and I'm, work I'm getting a job, I'm working, moving back, and just get a job down there, try to live down there. And try to save as much her. money as possible, because oh, yes. you know it costs dough. Oh, yes. Big dough. All right, you guys, we're going to introduce our next story, and hopefully it'll shed some light on your situation. Meet Athena. She is extremely upset because her pregnant 17-year-old daughter seems determined to keep a child that she is not equipped to take care of. And she is afraid that she'll be the one who ends up picking up the slack for her baby when that baby is born. Athena, why do you think that you're going to be caring for this baby? Well, because she is... She, me and her have had a lot of talks about her being pregnant. She came to me told me she wanted to give the baby up for adoption. I said, fine, this is what you want to do, because I don't believe in abortions. That, I'm real strong about that. I said, fine, we'll find somebody, we'll see a lawyer, we'll get this started. Okay, so she came to you and said she wanted to give the baby up, and you you said, okay, and what'd she do then? The baby, the, the boyfriend got to talking to her, and she yes. changed her mind. And now she decides she does not want to do this. She does not want to give the baby up now. I get no help from her father. Her father wants nothing to do with her. He's disowned her totally. And so you feel like it's going to be your responsibility it's raising this baby. It's all on me. My whole family wants nothing to do with her. My niece is also here So today. a similar situation, but the difference in your story is that you yourself are raising a 19-month-old baby. Yes, I had Nicole when I was 17. And ah, I see a pattern here. Yes, and I am really scared that my daughter, I don't want my daughter to follow the same pattern I did. I am struggling right now. I have a 19-month-old, plus I have two other girls. But can you understand her argument that you did it, why can't I? That's it right there. This is what I try to tell her. Don't do what mom did. All right. Let's, I, let's meet your daughter. And she is here, supported by our cousin Jana. Nikki, Jana, come on out. Hi, Nikki. Thank you. 
thank you for joining us. Hi, Jana. You're here for moral support. Yes. Nikki, tell us what this pregnancy is like for you, knowing that nobody in the family wants to, to talk about it, wants to be a part of it, and your mom wants to do something that you're not so comfortable it's, doing. It's hard because it's like... Take your time. It's like... I want my mom to be there, but I don't need her pushing things on me. I don't need it. I have enough to deal with. You know, I don't have the father. I don't have my dad. I don't have my family. And at this point in time, I don't know what I want to do. So you haven't made up your mind to no. keep the baby. Does it make it worse that your mother's telling you what she thinks you yes, should do? It does. So, so what do you want to tell her today? I just want you, Mom, just please back off. Let me make my choice. And if it's wrong, let it be wrong. Nikki, Nikki, can you understand where your mother's coming from? I mean, I, I think I can a little bit because I'm a mother, too. Um, she wants to keep you from making what she thinks would be the worst mistake of your life. I understand. It's just, you know... You are not a mistake, but I'm trying to tell you if I don't want you going through what I went through. What did you go through? Tell us what you went through. Well, I went through... I had her. I got married to her... I was married to her father. I was working. My family wanted nothing to do with me at all. Then my mother, they came around. And I've been on, I have been on, I just went back to work. After not working for 10 years, been on welfare, I just now went back to work. So you were on welfare basically the whole time yes. raising your daughter. Yeah, I'm working So you time. struggled with yes. a capital S. Yes. Jenna, what do you want to say? You are her cousin, and do you support Nikki's decision to keep the baby if that's what she intends to do? Yeah, I do. I really do. Um, for the time back to that, I understand that she's 17, and everybody says there's no, you know, financial and stuff like that. You know what, there's ways of doing it. What are those ways? Because a lot of people don't really know how. how. You can get a job. I mean, well, you, how can you get a job when when you are uh, taking care of a yeah. newborn? Who do you who did Nikki? Who do you have to take care of the newborn while you're out working? Sorry. Mom works. Mom works. Grandma works. Yes, sir. Mom works. Um, to the lady in front, over here, the mother. That's a baby. If you and I gave her up when I mean, when you was young, why make her give it up too? Because it's a good deal for you. Wait, so wait. Well, I mean, do you, then you say you won't abandon her. Does that mean I that you're not abandon her? I will always be there for Nicole emotionally. So you will be raising this baby. No, Steph. I will not raise the baby. I will be there for emotionally for her. I will not raise the baby. All right. Coming up next. At 15, she was forced to make a heartbreaking choice that she says has haunted her every day since. She will provide a cautionary tale for Nicole and words of warning to Sherry when we come back. That goes for you too, Nikki. We'll be back. to give their unborn children up for adoption. Girls, I'd like to introduce you to Kristen. Kristen was, is 32 now, but when she was 15, she too became pregnant and was forced to make a choice regarding her child that she says she bitterly regrets. Kristen, tell us what that choice was. Well, Ricky, when I was 15 and a half years old, I became pregnant and my parents uh, decided that it wasn't a good thing for me to have this baby. So they in turn kicked me out of the house um, I had to live uh, in a place with Catholic nuns for parents who are unwed mothers. Um, they just totally disowned me. They had nothing to do with me. And um, so, I, so you had no support. I had no support. No, I was all by myself. And so, did, did your parents tell you what to do? Did they? 
they forced me to give my baby up for adoption. And when my son was born, they told me I couldn't come back home unless I gave my son up for adoption. Um, I had to pick through 250 families to try to even decide which one was the best. I, I couldn't come home without this baby. With this baby, it was forget it. And I guess you couldn't raise this baby on your own without a place to live. I, I couldn't raise this baby without a place to live, but the fact of the matter is, is they forced me to do it. You know, I'm, I'm 15 and a half years old, you know, and I think that my parents should support me. You know, and then... Thank you. were adopted yes so so you I mean so you are not against adoption you're no. just against being forced to make a decision that you did not want to make yes and and life has been very t difficult for you yes it has been what, what has the past 15 years been like for you it's been years? it's been um it's been hell it's it's been humiliating it's been horrible um, I don't want to have children because I'm afraid that I might have to give my other child up or something might happen um, I don't get along with my parents at all. We don't speak. You can't even look at your mother because of this. No, I can't look at my mother. I can't look at my family. My family is just disgusted that the whole thing had happened to me. And um, I think it's horrible. I'm a good person, and I just want to do the best that I could, but I would like to have had the chance to make my own decision, no matter what. So what would you say to these moms? I would just say... I would just say that you really just should be there for your daughter. And just let them know that whatever they do is okay. They want to support them. Because you don't know what it feels like. I've always felt so ugly and embarrassed. And that nobody really loved me. Because when your own family turns you away, what do you have? You don't have anybody. You know, I, I feel sorry for you and I understand. And like I said right before the commercial, I will always be there for Nicole. But I'm not going to support a situation that I cannot first of all, financially support, um, and second of all, I have been a teenage mom, and I know what it's like to go through that. And so, so, yeah. so, Mom, I'm sorry to cut you off, but where is the line between supporting her and, and not stepping up to really help her? Because what is a 15-year-old going to do? Where are you well, going to make enough money to support the child? That's not Adoption is the only answer because, realistically, she's not going to be able to keep that child. How is she going to finish her education? She has dreams of college. How is she going to finish her education? How are you going to work? How are you going to take care of the baby? The line is going to be drawn where I'm not going to watch that child where you, when you go out I to never work asked and you, you go out I to never school. Asked you to, me also. I never asked you to take care of it. You keep telling people then who that you're going to be, gonna be there. there. Kevin, Mom. I will be here. Kevin. You don't, you don't have any. He doesn't have a job. Well, they don't have an apartment. I they don't just, have a car. I, I mean, somebody wants to. We have the car. We have the car. We, I, I just moved. We were living in Colorado in the same place they were living. And my parents got transferred to Texas. And it was either go with them, save up money, and come back, or just be stuck with nothing. All right, yes, ma'am. What do you want to say? What's the huge difference? If you was able to make it, why can't she make it? four years older. I had my high school, it, excuse me, okay? I had graduated from high school. She has not even begun, okay? No. Yes, ma'am, what do you want to say? I just have a comment to the mothers of the pregnant teenagers. I think maybe if you were to talk to your daughters and communicate a little more about pregnancy and sexual activity. <laughs> a little late now, but thanks for the advice. Kristen, I thank you so much for sharing your story. I just need to say that we did try to reach your family numerous times and they never did return our calls, so we never did get to hear their side of the story, but I thank you for sharing yours. Next, a devastated mom is here to confront her teen daughter who is pregnant for the second time. Mom says she will not leave here today until she has convinced her daughter to give up her second baby for adoption. We'll be back. What is best for my daughter? I kept saying to myself, my daughter deserves the moon and the stars.
get our expert involved. We have Ginger Grand Canola here today. Nice to see you. We love having you. And we were talking during the break, and I was asking you, what would you do? Or I was trying to think, what would I do? I honestly don't know what I would do if I was these girls' age yeah. and in the situation that they're in. What What can you say to the moms and to the, to the teenagers? To, to, to the teenage moms and also to the moms, it, the, the key thing in here is that whenever you have a baby, you have a family. So having the baby is now a family situation. We have a family problem, not just a mother and baby problem. And, and with that, also what goes along with this is that these girls, the 15-year-olds the, the and so forth, they did engage in an adult activity, having sex and having a baby. And yet there's no way that at this time in li their life, they are ready to know the long stretch consequence of what this is going to involve. Now, and you won't know until you're you there. Know. I had no idea. I you had. don't know. And with that, the first thing, no matter what decision I would make at 15, 16, 17 years old, the first persons that I would want to go to would be my family and my parents to help me. So I would absolutely encourage that this is looked at as a family issue, that the mothers don't abandon your daughters. Look to them. They need a lot of love and a lot of help, and it's not going to be an easy decision. Okay. We're going we're gonna to hear more from you very yes. soon. Our next guest, Carrie, says she has been devastated ever since her daughter Natalie first became pregnant at the age of 15, and never more so than now, because 18-year-old Natalie is pregnant for the second time. Carrie, why are you so upset this time around? Well, I'm upset because when she had her first baby, she dropped out of school. So she has no education. Which tends to happen when teenagers right, have so babies. So she's raising a, a child on her own. And now I'm afraid if she ha keeps this baby, there's not going to be a chance for her to get an education. Because she's going to be, you know, she's in the system, on welfare, you know. There's not You're saying be it's hard enough. Hard enough with her one, then with two, and with the, having another one, she's going to take away from the first one. All right, let's, let's meet your daughter and talk to her. Natalie, come on out. So she shouldn't do it. Well, your baby is making a flashing appearance on our show today. You've been listening to your mom. What well, do you want to say in response? I want to say that I don't live at home with you. I'm trying to make it on my own, and if anything, you should just support me. I do support you for what you do, but I want you to have better than what you have now. You don't have nothing. You can't go nowhere. I want you to have more than I had, more than I could give you. Were you not your I mom, too? You give your daughter more than we, you know. Carrie, how old were you when you had your first child? I was 16. So all of these moms were young moms, too. Yeah, just, I, I don't so think that's well, we know what it's like. We know what it's like. Maybe my mother should have told me the same. Well, okay, but let, let's think about that. Would you have done what your mother told you to do? I'm not telling if she would have asked me. Would you different. have done if you had your mother? I, I don't know. But my, you know, I don't know. My mother didn't do that. My mother did not do that. So I had to Natalie, Natalie, I would mother. imagine life is pretty difficult for you right now, raising a child. Oh, I don't regret my first baby. I don't regret this baby, and I feel as though it's something I can do. Is it hard to make ends meet? But she can't. It's hard. hard. It's hard, but we'll make it. I'm making it. Out. I'm gonna get you in my quicker team today. Quicker, you, you also regret your decision. What decision did you make? I kept my daughter. And, and you regret keeping your daughter? It's not that I regret keeping her. It's just so hard. I mean, y'all are clueless. Okay, so, so fill us in. What, what is so hard? What Tell us what life is like for you. <clears throat> I have to go you to work every day. Me. I can't go to school. I don't, you know, my biggest concern is not who am I going out with or what am I going to do this weekend. It's, is my daughter going to have diapers? I mean, you're 15 years old. You cannot drive. How do you plan to raise a child? She's so moving back by the time she has the kid. And she I will be there from the Nicole. from the when the kid is born for the you rest of my life. Yeah, I think so. Okay, tell us what, what happened to baby's father. He comes when he wants to come around. Does he pay any child support? He pays child support, but he was made to pay child support. He's not even on her birth certificate. Okay, so, 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 so,
you young women that are pregnant up there? Listen to your mother. You know, Nicole, She's giving you a place to live with that child. She's buying her food. Obviously, she's going to buy the food and probably the diapers. So what are you going to be doing? Putting it in his mouth and putting diapers on his butt? No. I'm not going to be living with Thank you, Winter. Thank you very much. Yes, yes, sir. I have a quick question for uh, Kevin. How long have you known her? Well, no. They've been dating for five months. Weren't you paying attention? In five months. I'm talking about knowing her. How long have you actually... No, no, five months, that's it? No, no. So you before, know. before, I like seen her around, because where we were from was a smaller town, but I've known her, actually known her. Do you love her? Oh, yes, I do. Do you want it? Do, do you want to spend the rest of your life with her? Yes, I do. You see a future for the two of you. You don't, Mom. No. And Nicole, I mean... Nicole and I have talked before about adoption and about her keeping it, and she has always said to me, you know, Nicole, I have a better chance of raising a baby with you than I ever would with Kevin. I don't know Kevin well enough to move in with him. So it's not like she doesn't have a head on your shoulders, and, but, you know, now I'm hearing something different. All right. Coming up next, after agonizing for nine long months over whether to give up her child, this teen finally made a dramatic decision and acted on it just two months ago. Find out what that decision was when we come back. And I'd also like you to meet Jessica. Just two months ago, Jessica signed her newborn daughter over to adoptive parents. Jessica, I can't even imagine what the past two months have been like for you. Tell us your story. Well, um, I found out I was pregnant about maybe a month and a half of my pregnancy. And the, I had my boyfriend at the time with me. And the first thing that came out of his mouth is, we're not keeping it and you're getting an abortion. And I said... No, I don't want to. I really don't want to. And I kept it from my parents for a while. And I finally had to break down and tell my mom because I was afraid I didn't have insurance. I knew I had to go to the doctor. Well, when I asked her about my insurance, my mom kept asking me why, why. And I didn't want to tell her. And I finally broke out and I said, I'm pregnant. And she goes, oh, God, Jessica. She goes, I'm not surprised. I'll be right over. And I said, all right, and she, not exactly the supportive reaction you oh, wanted. No, no, no. <laughs> um, and and you carried this baby, obviously. And, and yeah. during that time, did you know what you were gonna do? No. When my mom came over that day, her and my boyfriend at the time sat there and were like, "You can't keep it. You can't do it. You know, you an abortion would be the best thing for you. You need to do it." And I felt so cornered. I finally said, "Fine, I'll do it. If that's what you guys want, fine, I'll do it." I made an appointment. Um, but you never showed up. No, I got physically sick every day. I, I couldn't do it. And I was so determined I was going to raise my child. I, too, had that attitude. I did this. This is my responsibility. I need to take action for it. So I started calling the welfare places, WIC programs, everything in my state. And I can't just say you are so responsible to, to do all this, to make all these calls, to be so resourceful. It's really, it's really nice well, to see. Because, and I like to say to you, when the day you find out you're pregnant is the day you quit thinking about yourself first and that little baby comes to life. But a lot of people, a lot of people would say that the having an abortion will be easier because you don't know this baby. What was it like handing this baby over that you delivered? You went through that hideous experience, also a beautiful experience, but, but mostly painful, and you handed that baby up. How did you do that? They came and visited me in the hospital. Well, who came? The, pa the parents you chose? Because you, yeah. you chose them. Yeah. Oh, they're, oh, they're so great. They're the most wonderful people in the entire world. But they took, they took Madison, my daughter, and they were holding her, and I saw how happy they were. They were just so ecstatic. And I looked, and it felt like they were ripping my heart out of my chest. But... But then I had to look at her and I had to think, what is best for my daughter? I 
kept saying to myself, my daughter deserves the moon and the stars. She deserves everything in the entire world, and right now, I can't give it to her. <laughs> selfless thing you did. Unbelievable. And this wasn't open adoption, so you were able to choose them openly and, and you will have contact. Yeah, in and fact, you... I just went to church with them last Sunday. <laughs> oh, that is so wonderful that that worked out for the best for you. Dr. Ginger Pancanola, please. I, I have to absolutely applaud you tremendously because what you did, <laughs> what you did was you, you acted out of pure love for the child. Yes. And it, it is painful, and all of these experiences are painful, and yet you did what was best for that child, and it is absolutely a mature decision. And what I'm going to say to the mothers of the teenage wait, mothers... Wait, you might have to wait, because we're going to take a commercial break. Okay. When we come back, we're going to go okay. right to you. Let me also say that no matter what decision you make, it's a painful one. Yes. All right, when we come back, have any of our teens come closer to making a decision about their baby's futures? We'll find out. thank all of our guests for sharing their stories today. Whatever they ultimately decide, I know the process will have been painful, and I hope that in the end, the choice that they make regarding the future of their children is the one that will bring each of them the most peace. Good luck to you all. Thank you so much, and thank you for watching. See you next time. Tonight at 8 on an all-new Moesha. Moe's facing the toughest decision of her life, choosing between an old flame or her new bow. Moesha, followed by Clueless, tonight at 8. Now stay tuned for The Jenny Jones Show, next only on UPN 9.